Hi, I'm Tony Spano, host like Christmas Tree Farm. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we kind of wrapped up with shearing, and when I was doing these Canaan fir, I kind of noticed that we had uh, some bagworms in them. And so what you want to do is you want to go through and pick them out, get them out of your fields, out of your trees, so that they don't, you know, infest and spread around. So that's what we're going to do today. I see the worst one is this tree. There's one right there I can see, a couple in this one. So we're going to kind of work this area and just get all those pests out of the field. Um, I don't know a lot about the cycle, but I think what happens, what I've read a little bit, and uh, is the female lives inside the cocoon that they make. And, you know, when I was pruning, I saw the caterpillar actually coming up here and eating and things like that. And what they're going to do is they're going to eat, eat the needles, eat the, eat the tree. So we don't want that. Definitely would have a less quality product. So we're going to get them out of the field and, uh, yeah, pretty simple, pretty easy. All right, so as you can see, we have a pretty good amount of bagworms on this tree. And just to show what we want is to make sure that we're removing the caterpillar. You see it's kind of oozing out of there. So we kind of, we know they're in there. So that's fantastic. We know that we're going to be removing this pest. And it's just a matter of pulling them off. I think this webbing is kind of the damage that they do. I think they come out of their cocoons and feed on the needles. And I'm just putting them in an old coffee can right now. That's all I see on that one. So we're going to be opening up these trees next year in 2024. They are a little taller, six to seven already, but we one, we kind of like to have some taller trees. Two, uh, several years ago, we were only planting, I guess th this we were planted in 2015, right? And maybe uh, 15, 14, 13, and 12, we were only planting maybe 500 trees a year. So we really had to kind of hold some back because we were overselling our stock. So we held these back a little bit just to give our small ones kind of over there some room to grow and make sure we had enough trees every year for to be open if you've been following along you know that we cordon off and only open a block at a time to control our inventory so when you kind of Whole trees back some of them get taller they got good genes and a good microclimate micro soil and some took off that's fine <laughs> people want big trees So I guess it's just, I mean, when, when I came across these bagworms, I noticed them last year in kind of our other field, and I'm gonna go double check those as well. Like this one here, it's got a pretty decent amount of bagworms on it, and the tree does look a little more empty. Now look up here at this, this here is the damage, right? They're just clearing, eating those needles off the trees. So definitely don't want that. Peel them off, get them out of there. I think we're going to have a little campfire later today, and maybe we'll uh, see if these things pop when you throw them in. This one is pretty, a little more, maybe the most infested tree I've seen. So 
based on this damage, obviously they're not staying in these cocoons. They kind of, they must be coming out, eating and going back in. Two on the leader. I noticed them varying heights in the tree, inside, outside. So they are wherever they decide to be. Might need the kids to come out and help. <laughs> them being shorter gives them a better, better perspective in some spots. seeing too many as we move up into the trees. Let's just check the other side. This area here is kind of that soil problem that I am going to do a video on next because I think there is some improvement. Still some work to be done, but oh, they are looking better. Running out of time though. All right, not seeing anything on this side. All right, we'll take a drive to the other field where I first saw them, just to make sure that I, uh, we're not, we're not getting a small infestation over there. All right, I figure as I'm driving over the other field, I would take the opportunity to read from you the page from the U.S. Department of Agricultural Christmas Tree Pest Manual, third edition, what it has to say on bagworms. So they are in the needle feeding group and their hosts are eastern red cedar, spruce, fir, eastern white pine, and scotch pine. Importance. Bagworm feeding results in trees with foliage and brown cases attached to twigs. Damaged trees are unfit for Christmas tree sale and may be killed if larvae strip off all the foliage. This insect is most common in southern Minnesota, south to Missouri, and then east through Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and southern Pennsylvania. Look for sparse or stripped foliage, especially at the top of the tree. Shoot tips may be flagged, which means discolored or deformed. Conspicuous brown silk bags, one and three quarter to two inches long with embedded needle particles. Their biology. The wingless female moths lay eggs, eggs in August and September inside silken bags. In late May, newly hatched larvae, caterpillars, emerge from the bags on silken strands that are readily blown into the wind to nearby trees. Once they have landed on a tree, the larvae feed on the needles and spin silken bags they cover with bits of needles. Larvae carry these bags around as they feed on needles all summer. Once they have completed development, they secure the bags to twigs. Winged adult males fly to mate with females who remain in their bags where they lay the eggs that will spend the winter on the tree. Because caterpillars move only short distances and females never leave the securely attached bag, Damage may be confined to a single tree and its nearest neighbors. Monitoring and control. Begin monitoring trees of all ages in May and continue throughout the growing season. Treat by hand unless infestation is severe or widespread. Hand pick and destroy silken bags which will contain eggs, moths, or caterpillars depending on the time of year. Bags can be destroyed by soaking them in a bucket of soapy water or burning. Cut out and destroy tr individual trees that are severely infested. For widespread inf infestations, spray trees with a registered insecticides, treat when caterpillars are small and before much feeding injury has occurred. Next crop, before planting, remove infested trees and natural stands or windbreaks near the site. All right, so these are trees actually we're gonna be opening this year. And in this field, uh, last year when I was pruning is when I, I did notice our first, um, my first sighting with bagworms. So I just wanna take a quick walk through here, make sure we don't still See any? And there's one right there. Look at that. Good thing we're doing this. So we'll walk the rest of the field, start a row over, and 
just keep our eyes peeled. So my dad and I work together. That tree is tagged because there's a, a hornet's nest in it. So whoever finds it, we tag it just to give each other a heads up. And then we'll come back and we'll handle it. So just my observation, just that they, when they're happening, they're in kind of a cluster. So they're all pretty close. First one I saw was, you know, I think in this tree right here, a couple on that one. So, you know, if you get to them before they, like anything, get out of hand, might not even have to spray, but. comes to spring, you gotta worry about timing and your other pests and beneficial insects, you know, you can't can't have perfect world of everything. So you know this method of control is <laughs> time consuming but definitely case by case. We missed this tree for getting cones off, didn't we? That's with a little bird in there. Oh, see you later, little bird. So as we kind of cross over this road right here, we get into, I think, one row of balsam, and then we get into some more Koreans. So, um, sorry, Canaan's not balsam. See, I can't even tell these two apart. It's ridiculous. Um, I don't think they've attack the Koreans, but we're going to take a quick walk through there just in case things happen. I think I saw a weevil in a Black Hill spruce this year, so, you know, pests are going to learn to adapt and find their best food source, so we'll take an easy walk. I should say a couple grand fur in here. All right, I think we'll uh, we'll call this field searched, I guess. So uh, yeah, that's it. Um, you know, like I said, I'll read you some of the information. I'll probably kind of overlay that actually on top of me walking around. That way you have something to listen to besides me talk. <laughs> so all right, well, thanks for watching.